You survived the evil 5.3. Woohoo. Either that or you just skipped it all together. Whatever works. We're finally going to be talking about a nicer method, more streamlined, faster method to factor these trinomials when the A, the value on in the front, isn't 1. Instead of guessing and checking, we're going to be using what's called the AC method. So you have that little dialog box of how it works, but you don't really understand until you practice it, until you see it. So what the AC method does is it takes this trinomial and we rewrite it with four terms. And whenever we have a polynomial of four terms, we factor it by grouping. So we force it to be a method that we're comfortable with using. And how do we get there? We first need to look at what are our constants a, b, and c in this case. And again, our setup for these kinds, ax squared plus bx plus c. Quadratics always look like that. So what is my a value? a is 3. B is negative 10, but we're not going to really use it in this method. And my C value is what? Negative 8. Okay. So what this AC method does, we take our A value and we take C. We multiply them together. So if I take 3 and multiply it by negative 8, what are we looking at? We get negative 24. Okay, so we take A, we take C, and we multiply them together. Hence the name, the AC method. So, now we behave as normal. I'm still trying to factor 3x squared minus 10x minus 8. I need to look at breaking up negative 24 into things that multiply to negative 24 and add to negative 10. Add to that middle term. So, what are we looking at? If I take 1 and 24, too big. Not going to get me to negative 10. We need things closer together. How about 2 and 12? So, we're getting closer there. Some combo will give us negative 10. Which one do we need to be positive? Which one do we need to be negative? The larger one has to be negative. So, we need a negative 12 and a positive 2. That one will work for us. So we found the factors that will work. Now what happens? We take negative 10 and we rewrite it in terms of positive 2 and negative 12. So it's going to feel funny, but you'll see what we're doing in a minute. I'm going to write negative 12x plus 2x in place of negative 10. So is it still the same polynomial? Yeah. If I combine like terms here, I get up to that middle term, which is what we want to do. We want to design it to have four terms now, because when we have four terms, how do we factor? By grouping. So group in the first two and the last two. We just can go on as normal now. So what do we ask? common between the first two that we can take out of both is a factor of what? 3x. And when we do that, what are we left with? I've got 1x minus 4. Common between the second two that we can take out is a factor of 2. What are we left with? x minus 4. And now what? Common between these two that we can take out of both is that entire quantity, x minus 4. And when we do that, what are we left with? 3x plus 2. Factored. Now it's a product. And we can check, and we always want to with these kinds. If I actually multiply it out, do we get back to the original? Let's see. So first, we'll give me 3x squared satisfying that part. Outer plus 2x. Inner minus 12x. Last minus 8. So we're looking at 3x squared minus 10x minus 8. Did we get there? We got there. Okay. So instead of having to try a whole bunch of different combinations for 8 and 3, switching the order, 
we design it to work, to be a factoring by grouping problem. And it'll get better with practice with these. I know it's a lot of information coming at you. But what are we doing? Taking A and C, multiplying them together, breaking it up, and then rewriting our middle term. So we'll practice some more. Let's look at another one. Let's go ahead and factor uh, 8x squared plus 8x minus 6. So just thinking back to the guessing and checking method, I have a lot of different options. I can do 1 and 8, 2 and 4, 4 and 2, 8 and 1, 1 and 6, 2 and 2, 3 and 2, 6 and 1. And then all the different combinations there. Ooh. So instead, let's do this AC method. So my A value is what? A is 8 and C is negative 6. The signs always go with the terms. So when we multiply A times C, what are we looking at? 6 times 8 is negative 48. And, I don't know if you can see that, let me scooch it over. We need to break up negative 48 into what? I need factors that are multiplying to negative 48, adding to positive 8. So we can just try some and see what we get. 1 and 48 are way too big. So 2 and 24. Will any combo get us close to 8? Still too big. So let's try next factor up. 3 and 16. Getting closer, but still too big. 4 and 12. That's going to be our winner, but we need to decide which one needs to be positive, which one needs to be negative. So what do we need? We need it to add to be positive, multiply to be negative. So 12 needs to be positive, 4 needs to be negative. Okay, so now we want to rewrite 8x in terms of these two. So I've got 8x squared, and I'm going to put 12x first, negative 4x second. Is it still the same polynomial if we combine our middle terms? Yes, we get there. But now we can ask, how do I factor? We've got four terms, so we group the first two together and the last two together. So let's see, 8x squared plus 12x, sign goes with the second term, so negative 4x minus 6. Grouping, grouping, grouping. And we want to ask, common between these two that we can take out of both is a factor of 4x. Let me do that. What are we left with? I've got 2x here plus 3. And we need these two, the insides, to match exactly. So common between these two that we can take out of both is a factor of negative 2. And when we do that, do we get this? Hopefully we do. Let's see. Negative 2 out of negative 4 gives me positive 2x. Negative 2 out of negative 6 gives me positive 3. We got there. So common between these two that we can take out of both is the factor 2x plus 3. And we're left with what? 4x minus 2. So the magic combo in the beginning, breaking up 8 into 2 and 4, and negative 6 into 3 and negative 2, and having this specific order. Too much work to guess and check. The AC method will get us there so much faster. All right, so one for you to try. Factor that trinomial using the AC method. Foil it out in the end and check. Make sure that we actually get there. All right, of yours, what was A? A is 6, C is 2, so when we multiply those together, a times C, we're looking at 12. So we need to break up positive 12 into things that are going to multiply to give us 12 and to give us 7. So what combo do we need? 4 and 3, both positive. So we need to rewrite our middle term in terms of these two. So 6x squared plus 4x plus 3x plus 2. When I add those two together, I get to my middle term. Same polynomial, just looks different now. And again, we have four terms. We group the first two and the last two. 
time in between these two that you could take out of both was a 2x. When we do that, what were you left with? 3x plus 2. And we need these to match exactly. They already do. So what can we factor out of this one without changing anything? A 1. Common between these two that we could take out of both was 3x plus 2. And we were left with 2x plus 1. Okay, if you foil it out and check, we do get back to the original trinomial. And you might have switched to this order around. You could have put 3x first and then added 4x on the back. Still get the same thing. Let's show you that. So instead, if I had written 3x first and 4x last, do we still get this same answer, those same factors? So let's see. Group the first two, group the last two. Common between these guys is 3x. When we take that out, we're left with 2x plus 1. Common between these two that we can take out is a factor of 2. Matching exactly that we can take out of both, 2x plus 1. What's left over? 3x plus 2. Do we get the same? Yeah. Order doesn't matter with multiplication. We can switch those around. So when we're rewriting this middle term into the two new ones, we want to group together terms that have things in common. So 6 and 4, they have something in common. We could group it like that. And 6 and 3, they share things in common. So we would, could have grouped it with 6 and 3 together, 4 and 2 together. Or 6 and 4 together, 3 and 2 together. So generally, we ask, what does this one have more in common with? four or three and group it that way. In this case, it didn't matter. After you practice with a few, you'll start noticing the patterns. All right, another one. We've got some big numbers here. And the first thing we always want to look at, is there anything that they all share in common that I can take out? Can I make the numbers easier on myself? So greatest common factor that they all share is two. So if we take out a two, what are we left with? 10x squared minus 23x plus 12. Okay. So now they're a little bit smaller. We still have to carry along our greatest common factor on the outside. But we take our a value and our c value, multiply them together. So a times c, we're looking at positive 120. And we need to break that up into factors, multiplying to 120, adding to negative 23. So 1 and 120, those are too big. 2 and 60, 3 and 40, they're still too big. So jumping down, let's start around 6. So it would be 6 and 20. If I add them, I'm looking at 26. If I subtract, I'm looking at 14. So we're getting a little bit closer. Next factor along. 8 and 15. If I add those two together, I'm looking at 23. When I multiply them, I'm looking at 120. But I need it to multiply to be positive and add to be negative. So what does that tell me about these signs? They both need to be negative. Okay, so it doesn't really matter, but we can ask, what does 10 have more in common with? 8 or 15? And they both share things in common, so it doesn't matter. Or you could look at the back and think, what does 12 have more in common with? 8 or 15? In this case, the order doesn't really matter. But we still need to remember, greatest common factor on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and group negative 15 with 10, and negative 8 with 12. I like those numbers. Okay. You could switch it around. You'll still get the same answer. And now that we have a polynomial of four terms, grouping the first two and the last two, the sign goes with the third term. We want to see what do they share in common that we can factor out of both. What are we looking at there? Two on the outside. Sharing in common, 5x 
When we take out 5x, what are we left with? 2x minus 3. And looking at the second term, I need these to match exactly. And right now, my number out on the front is negative. I need it to be positive. So I need to take out a factor of negative. And additionally, what else do they share in common? Factor of 4. So if I take a negative 4 out of negative 8, I'm looking at 2x. Negative 4 out of positive 12, looking at negative 3. Almost there. So common between these two that we can take out of both is 2x minus 3. So again, on the outside, don't forget, we factored out a 2 out of everything. And now we're taking out 2x minus 3. What are we left with on the inside there? 5x minus 3. Four. Could you imagine trying to guess and check to get this factorization? It would take so long to get there because these numbers are so large. AC method is your friend. It's going to save you a lot of time. Other thing to chat about, again, the order doesn't matter here, but we want to make sure we're factored down as far as we can go. All right, so last one for you to try. Take that trinomial, first of all, See if there's anything common that we can take out of everything. Use the AC method. Factor it completely. First thing to look at, is there anything in common that you could take out of all of them? Factor of 3. When you did that, what were you left with? 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. Okay, guessing and checking wouldn't be so bad since both of these are prime. But we like the AC method. We want to get more familiar with it. So let's multiply a and c together. That gave you 6. And we need to break up into factors. Multiplying to give us 6. Adding to give us 5. So what do we need? 2 and 3. And in this case, what do you want to group together? What does 2 have more in common with? 2 or 3? 2. So we'll put that one first. So we want to rewrite 5x in terms of these two now. Plus 2x plus 3x plus 3. We add those, we get here. Still the same polynomial. And now we want to group first two together and last two together. See what they share in common. Common between these two that we can take out of both was 2x. When we did that, we were left with x plus 1. Common between these two that we could take out was a 3. And we're left with x plus 1. And now, don't forget the greatest common factor. Common between these two that we can take out of both is x plus 1. And what are we left with? 2x plus 3. So in reality, the guessing and checking wouldn't be so bad in this case since we have primes everywhere, but we like that AC method. We want you to get more comfortable with it. It'll save you a lot of time on the exams and on your homework.